was it already the first of November? Um, so October wrap up time. Now I read eight books in total. Seven of those were proper books, one of those was short story was a short story, and when I say short, I do mean short. Um, so I didn't actually make up my stats. Like, oh my god, I am so good. Um, so the short story I would classify as liter literary fiction. There wasn't really like a main plot to it. Then I read two fantasy, two thriller, and three romance. And in terms of my October TBR, I picked out six books and had a seventh book like as like an honorary pick um where it wasn't based off of like the raffle like the raffle tickets it was actually based off of like I wanted to read that book so in terms of my TBR I read three out of the six plus I did read the honorary book as well the books that I didn't read were Ali Carter I'd tell you I love you but then I'd have to kill you Scythe by Neil Schusterman and City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. There's a very high chance that I will read this in like this next coming week so I'm not kind of too concerned about that. Um, I just, I basically didn't finish a book until midway through and the first book that I finished was a short story. I think I was just in a slight slump. I don't even think I was reading any book at that point either. Like I genuinely think I just hadn't read anything. Um, so it was really good. Now in terms of my total pages, I read 2,670 in total, but my average rating was, when I round it out, round it up, it's 4.19 or the answer that the calculator gave me was 4.1875. So I had quite a high average. This is the first month that I've done this like average rating so I don't know what I think this is quite a high month um and there is like slight scale um for like movement of how I rate books um and my actual rating for the books so to get into it the first thing I read was the bookstore sisters by Alice Hoffman this was the short story um, I rated this three stars. It was okay. It was nothing special. Hence why I rated it three stars. Um, then I got to a book from last month's TBR. Um, so I feel quite successful in that. And that is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I knew I wanted to get to it. And then I read this. At, I started this um and then right finished it in my 24 hour readers on which technically is still ongoing two weeks later because of certain stuff but I really enjoyed this I on my like little thing I I put it as a five in total on Goodreads but in my like little comment section I put currently a 4.5 and I think I'd probably stick by that I did really enjoy it I enjoyed the letters it was really quick to read really captivating I'm definitely excited for book two. I know it has more of a focus on the gods with like glimpses of the romance. I do own book two in this style, um, in this typewriter style. I just enjoy it and I would recommend. I was slightly confused as to this time it was set in. I know this is like fantastical, but also historical. There was a lot of historical elements and then they use the word slay which feels more youthful and like current um so it did kind of confuse me I know this is probably like set in like the 1800s or type thing um with like the actual typewriters and everything I just the fact that it said the word slay I know that the word slay is going to have been around for a while but it in the context it was used in it felt very current but then the whole wars and everything felt 1800s 1900s and so I'm like what um but apart from that I did really enjoy it I think it just there was something missing I don't know what it was I don't remember what made me rate it like a 0.5 less I might have said so in the video then I read Let's Split Up by Bill Wood I rated this to four stars I enjoyed it it was good it was quick it's got big text so I read it a whole lot quicker it was really good for this 24 hour readathon basically most of these were 
before I took the like little pause. Nothing special, but at the same time, I think it was exactly what I needed. I needed, after Divine Rivals, I just needed something else that was going to be quick, it was going to be easy, it was going to not going to take too much brain power, that was going to keep me captivated. Um, yeah, so I would definitely recommend, although it might not be for everyone because it's nothing special. And I did, towards the end, see the part of the ending coming. And also, you know, I did see the whole ending coming. Then I read Survive the Night by Riley Sager. So I forgot to say this was part of my TBR. So was, was there snow? This was not. I knew that I wanted to read a Riley Sager book in October. This was my first of the author. Um, I read this because Ailey was like, I think she had it on her TBR or something. And was like, someone tell me if it's good. No, I know what it was. I think she must, must have mentioned it in the video. And I was like, I think it must have been like her TBR or something. And I was literally like, I pretty much own every single one of those books. This, our tastes are very, very similar. And she was like, Ugh. and I think I must have said survive the, she had said something about like, let me know if it's good. To the point where I mean, it was like, okay, I've got to pick it up. So that's what I did. Um, and I, I reached this of five stars. But at the same time, could probably be more like a 4.75. It's probably more like a 4.75. There was something about it. Like, it kept me captivated. I very slightly did guess the ending. I don't know what made me guess it. Although I didn't guess some aspect of the ending with the woman. I loved the way it was crafted. It was so bingeable, so easy, so quick. Although I have to say the epilogue. The epilogue what is that epilogue maybe that's what lowered my rating slightly i was like girl what i did literally finish this at 2 a.m and then messaged ailey being like yeah i've reached this five stars you need to read it um and i kind of i still stick by the rating at five stars on goodreads also i think that goodreads needs to have at least like a 3.5 and a 4.5 rating it doesn't need to go into the 2.5s and like the 0.25s but at least if it has the 0.5s for at least like the 3.5 and the 4.5 it just would make it easier because there's a big difference between a three and a four but then when you're rating it like 4.5 no it's the difference between a four and a five and it's like if you're rating it 4.5 it's like is it good enough to be rated at a five on goodreads or is it like okay enough just to be a four but then it's like you know um but yeah i definitely would recommend and i do have another riley saga book and I'm looking forward to reading it. Then I read What Lies Beyond the Veil. This is book one of the Of Flesh and Bone series. I reached this three stars. Also, this is by Harper L. Woods. Unless I've just not read a lot of fantasy. Some of this felt like unique. There was definitely elements of like, there was a veil um, between like the humans and Fae, um, which obviously is a very tiny bit like Akatar. But at the same time, the way in which the veil was used, I think was unique. I didn't care too much about the characters. But at the same time, I do own books two and three. Because of course, because I think they were an offer at the works. Or like on clearance. And so I got all three. And like I am interested to read book two. It does seem to have like a lot of continuation. And based off the blurb of book three, something goes down in book two. And I think I could enjoy it more. But sometimes book one isn't too great. Um, but because I have book two, I don't feel as, like, I feel more likely to read it. Whereas if I hadn't owned book two, I probably wouldn't have continued or I'd have bought the Kindle version. Um, actually this was on Kindle Unlimited, which was very nice. We saw, I saw some of the ending coming, not in the aspect that it did, but I saw the very bare component of it like it coming then i read happy also that was on my tbr as well then i read happy place by emily henry this was my like little token tbr book i raced this a 4.25 but put it as a four on goodreads i i really enjoyed it and all the moments but didn't quite connect with all the characters and i think i still stand by that it could just be wrong place wrong time um, and it could have been a five star and I do think it could have been a five star if it had been slightly different I think because I was reading it 
on holiday where it was warm there but it was cold here i think my brain there was just a slight disconnect um and i think because of that i didn't enjoy it as much but at the same time it has all the components of a book that i would enjoy and obviously 4.25 is still a great rating but i know that for a lot of people this is a five star so i was disappointed i didn't go into it with the high expectations of like oh my god this is gonna be a five star but at the same time i think there was definitely some elements of expectations and like it felt like there was something missing don't i think i think it's because there were, there didn't seem to be a lot of romance and then all of a sudden like the last like 20 percent, there was like romance and i was like i kind of wanted more um we got a lot of the friends which great loved that but there wasn't a lot of romance and i know that this is definitely more of like a literary fiction with romance like a subplot of romance but i just i think i wanted more romance and i didn't get that then i finished the dead romantics by ashley poston i rated this a five stars although at the same time it could slip down to like the 4.75 at times but i really loved this i enjoyed like how the conversations like with i loved the whole ben and florence like how they interacted with that whole situation did i see the ending coming of course i did i like we just knew it could just be like the hopeful in me being like but how is this gonna happen if he's in this way and it was just so nice i loved the moments it was so sweet it was so tender i loved like the whole family and how she went through that whole arc and it was just so nice and i wasn't expecting the whole thing with her ghostwriting thing you understand um i just i didn't see that and i was like that's quite smart i don't think there was contextual clues at all then the final book i read was wild love by elsie silver i rated this a 4.75 i lowered the rating because i think there's just one too many spice scenes and i think i find that with a lot of elsie's books there's just the spice isn't all that necessary i think i prefer like a little bit more tension than spice and like just like the sweet like kisses and everything whereas i don't know it just like this could have been like 50 pages shorter like the spice was okay i enjoyed it more compared to like willa and kate's spice um like it was definitely more like tamed down than this but at the same time there was a bit too much of it although i did enjoy cora and all of that story and the development and some people i've seen some people be like it quite developed quite quickly but you've kind of got to think of this as like a little bit of a snapshot like you're not seeing all parts of their lives like the whole day isn't being described but at the same and like you're going like having like jump points of like weeks between and so it's kind of like actually a lot happens in weeks and the author doesn't necessarily need to mention that in order for it to still be a good book because i think if she tried to detail it every every like single thing people would be like this could have been cut out and like this was unnecessary and so i think she had the right amount of involvement i just i loved it i can't wait to i do i don't even know whereabouts this book is on this side is it here oh my god that was very good it's because i've literally just seen it I am excited to read Wild Eyes, which is West and Skylar. We already see in this book that he already, before even meeting, he already has some attraction to her from seeing her in her videos. Um, so it'll be really fun to see, like, whether he, like, fangirls over her. And that is genuinely the right word. Like, I feel like he's going to fangirl a little bit, which would be really interesting to see. Those are all the books that I read. Um, I think I had a good I had a good mixed reading month in terms of like the genres of books, but that was kind of what I was going for. And so I knew when I picked well, this shelf isn't got any of the raffle ones on. I knew when I picked the books from the raffle, like when I picked the books to put in like the raffle tickets, I knew that I wanted to make sure I had a good range. And actually the raffle tickets did pick out a good range. Because actually this is, I don't even know what this is actually. 
it's like a YA rom-com spy thing and then I just kind of missed out on sci-fi and a fantasy <laughs> I just love how the one sci-fi I had is not being read I do still want to read sci but at the same time it probably just wasn't the month for it um there are books from my like September TBR where I'm like actually I think I want to get to some of those this month also because one of them I do think is on my 24 for 2024 and I'm like I do also need to start working on that 25 for 2025 list but I think I need to wait till after Christmas because I kind of like to put books on that I know that I own so for example I put this book on the 24 for 2024 have I read it no it does also mean that I want to read it like in next month I hope you guys enjoyed let me know what books you read last month and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys